Tell me about the good old days. And since our first story is about Who Framed Roger Rabbit, I thought let's talk about the movie Who Framed Roger Rabbit. And this Please, Agent right. Boomer, you just gotta help me with this. Oh, that was pretty cool. <laughs> that was back in 1988. Uh, yeah. Remember that? And uh, I didn't quite know what to expect. I don't think when I went to the theater, I realized we were going to have as many cameos as we did i think i knew that it was going to be no i don't think i knew that this all that what was going to happen i think i knew that it was going to have this cartoon rabbit in it and he's working with this detective to solve uh to solve who framed him and stuff and we had we had a movie that was very much an homage to the 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 classic noir films uh but it also homaged all of the classic animation of, yeah, like the 30s and 40s, and right? I was I I was I was blown away because we have to understand when I was a kid, maybe when all the other kids were out there watching, mm-hmm. you know, He Man and all that. I, I was actually watching a lot of classic Looney Tunes, a lot yeah. of classic Disney cartoons as well, because the we had the Disney Channel, so I got to see all of the old Mickey Mouse, Donald Duck, Goofy, all those silly symphonies. I I I used to eat those up. I used to watch them every day after school. Okay, and because they they even had a show that was hosted by George Plimpton called Masterpiece Theater. Yes, masterpiece. <laughs> oh, theater, you know yeah. this. Okay, yes, yeah. Yes. And uh, I was uh, fascinated by this movie because I'm, I'm, I'm getting all these references. I'm like, I know who that is. I know who that is. Every the, the I most- know. I think we were at right, just the perfect age. In fact, yeah. I would go so far as to say this was when I was starting to become aware of the 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 the, the meta element. You know what we talk about a lot here: the studio elements yeah. Yeah. and the behind the scenes and business and all that. So when I went to see this. I understood how big a deal it was that you had both Warner Brothers and Disney characters in the same movie. It was huge. And yes. I that Warner Brothers, I think it paid off for them big time. Because I think at that point, the Looney Tunes characters weren't quite in vogue, but this movie kind of brought them back. Yeah. So in a way, them helping Disney with this project actually helped them out too. So. Yeah. You know, it came not, down to that yeah. scene where where Eddie is falling from the sky. Yes. And there's Mickey Mouse on one side and there's Bugs Bunny on the other. I remember. And they're that. playing off each other. And I had I remember having this thought. I'm like, I wonder if part of the agreement on this is that characters from the two studios have to have equal screen time. And sure enough, I found out that, yeah, in a behind the scenes kind of thing, yeah, there was something like that, that they needed to have equal time. And there was a lot of negotiation that went into it. And I found that incredibly fascinating. So it was, it was just something that hit at the right time and, Honestly, I think it's a masterpiece, to be honest with you. Not to mention, yeah. I mean, look who starred in it, right? We had Bob Hoskins yep. as Eddie Valiant and the the great, incomparable voice actor, Charles Fleischer. I was a yep. huge fan of his from his stand-up routine, Yeah, you know? So when he did the voice of, of Roger Rabbit, I was like, oh, dude, oh, man, you can't do better than this, right? You and know. then you have Christopher Lloyd as Judge Doom, the villain of the picture. Okay. Oh my gosh, he Terrifying was like it. a real person become cartoon, right? It's just absolutely yeah. amazing. And then the sultry, <laughs> sexy voice of Kathleen Turner. I mean, you could say what you want about the drawing of of Jessica Rabbit, but Kathleen the Turner voice. was that voice, right? They uh, I mean. th- that was one of the first things I saw a making of on TV, and they interviewed Kathleen Turner in the making of special. And they were saying they wanted me. I-, I think the word she used was slinky. Her voice to sound, or maybe that's the wrong word. Never mind. But it was like they slinky, they want- sexy, sultry. Yeah, sultry voice. You they, could just they- go through the list. Absolutely, she was all of that. Uh, I it's a it was a fascinating movie. Uh, I mean, it starts out with a cartoon. You're like a, the baby Herman cartoon, exactly, right? just like the old car- old movies did. Yeah, yeah, and and um, and then it goes right into the live, and you realize it's a set. 
this is and of course i was old enough when it came out and I was, okay that's not how they made cartoons but i watch if i was younger seeing that I was like wow that's how they made cartoons they had these actual you know and uh and he can't make stars and that's his big thing i'll give you stars and everyone's yelling yelling and the director's yelling at him <laughs> well i love that yells. scene where he keeps hitting himself in the head and he gets stars and he gets birds yeah, and he gets, he gets birds bells everything it's everything like, <laughs> it's like oh geez stars. man and it's it, and then, of course, you know, his, uh, you know, Eddie Valiant, uh, you know, Bob Hodgkins, he's hired, you know, to find out what's going on with the uh, missus. And this is like something out of an old Hollywood. This is like, right. This is almost right out of the latest uh, Perry Mason series where, you know, he's hired to go get the dirt on what's going on with uh, with um, uh, Roger Rabbit's wife. And you mm-hmm. don't even see. I, 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 and he goes to the Ink and Paint Club. And that's when we see Betty Boop as the waitress. Oh, yeah. And she's yeah. in black and why and i you know it's funny because bob hodgkins he you know he don't like tunes and we find out why later on okay right but uh he still which was which was a great way to deal with that whole idea of prejudice right yeah he's it, it doesn't matter that it was it could have been people of a certain color people of a certain origin whatever Reality, it was whatever, cartoons yeah. in this one you know yeah, and, and he has a prejudice and he's he's and, and that's all of course what makes the dynamic between him and roger so great when they get stuck together later on but yeah uh, you know, Betty Boop's there, but he, even he kind of has a, has a soft spot for Betty Boop. He won't be mean to Betty Boop. You know what I'm saying? And like he says, and he goes, scotch on the rocks. And I mean, ice. And he gets it. And of course, uh, <laughs> yeah, right, right. Right. And then of course we got the Jessica rabbit singing number and her dress. It's a red dress, but then it sparkles as she walks out. Yes. The that was an incredible detail. element in, oh. in animation at the time, right? They were starting to incorporate some, computer graphics at the time which was really interesting but you know i'm telling you what you're looking at here is you've got jessica rabbit voiced by the same woman who was in body heat right i remember right yeah Uh, body heat peggy sue got married you know she she had the comedy thing too romancing the stone romancing the stone war of the roses right Mm -hmm. um Oh, you know, yeah. right around that time, there was a Playboy shoot for her, too. I oh, mean, interesting. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. That not, not, you know, shown as much as you might expect in Playboy, but that, uh, you know, kind of trend, you could almost kind of see some stuff. <laughs> almost you know? kind of, yeah. And uh, perfect casting for Jessica Rabbit. And I... I, I, the whole period of what was it? Is it is it 1940s or 1930s San Francisco? I think something it's, like that. Yeah. yeah, and it might have been after the war. I think. Yeah, and you know, you actually feel for Eddie. You know, he has a drinking problem, but right, because there is a reason for it. He lost his brother. His brother was murdered. We find out who by later on, and it's you know, and that's it plays into his tomb prejudice. But the, the, I don't know if any of you have seen it because who framed Roger Rabbit so, sort of fell off the ra- fell off the radar. But oh, I also love the Ink and Paint Club, the part with uh, Daffy Duck and the, uh, the Donald and Duck, Donald Duck, the, yeah, the dueling, the dueling pianos, which was perfect. And, and 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 Daffy makes this this joke about uh, I got to deal with someone who's got a speech impediment, and he's got a speech impediment himself. You know, I mean, of course, yes, and it's <laughs> and then of course. We have the uh, the weasels, who are the yep. Judge of Dooms, and of course, any of you who know Disney cartoons, you know weasels show up a bit. I mean, especially in Wind of the Willows, right? But right. it's funny how exactly. they've been commissioned to be the uh, the I guess like the secret police for Judge Doom for Toontown, and like the ones in a straight jacket, you know? <laughs> and, yeah, and, and I they love all have the, their different personalities. I love the bit where where Eddie pulls out the 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 big cartoon gun and he opens up the bullets. Yes, and and they 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 go goofy on him and do stupid shit, and he's like, "Dum dums." <laughs> and if you know your you know your firearms, dum dums, and you're like, "Oh gosh, I get it, I get it." It's funny. It, it's funny, and it's. Uh, I'm I'll tell you what, though, one thing about that movie needed to be edited for television. Do you know what it was? Does that something to do with Jessica? Falling, it does have something to do with Jessica. Flying out of Jessica. a car. No, no, no. That was that was on the DVD. You can only catch it if you if you if yeah. Right, everybody okay. knows about that. No, okay. this was one of the jokes. There's a joke where um, someone goes to reach down her her dress and and there's a bear trap in there and it snaps on his that. and he yeah. goes nice booby trap. Yes. Ah ha ha! Very funny. funny very funny. funny. Yeah, yeah, funny. 
they cha- they dubbed that line in the in the the network television version. He says, "Nice going, Jess." What? I don't know why this was not that big Does it a deal. Still have the scene with them reaching into the cleavage. Yes, <laughs> that's the thing. It's like really you're you you don't want him saying the words booby trap, but it's okay for somebody to reach down the girl's dress. This is okay with you. I you know censorship makes no sense. Censorship makes it no sense. doesn't, which. I don't know, man. I think that might actually be a good transition to the actual news art. All right. We're going to get right there in a minute. But I did want to say that this movie made uh, Cisco and Ebert's both made both their top 10 lists that year. It's a Marvel. It's history. Disney may hate it now, and I know they do. Yeah. But get yourself the Blu-ray. I think it's even coming to 4K Blu-ray, so maybe they don't hate it that much. And it's it was a touchstone movie. The idea was this is not necessarily the Disney name on it. It's their yeah. more adult thing. So it's a PG-13 movie. Uh, oh, and I had one other thing I wanted to say. Hmm. Okay. Uh, I don't know if it, this, I'll probably end up cutting this out anyway, but there was a scene. Remember the scene when um, Eddie has to get the photos and he hears Patty Cake? He's She's playing Patty Cake. Yes, yes, yes. And Patty, and Patty Cake. And like, oh, no, no, Patty Cake. And I, I remember there was a couple of, I think there was an older brother and his younger brother sitting in front of me or something because of, what are they doing? And the older brother's like, I don't know. And I'm like, and then of course you see the pictures and they're actually playing Patty Cake. King Patty Cake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's there's a little bit of an Easter egg in those pictures of the Patty Cake. Did really? you know this? No, I did not. So if you go back and watch it, look very closely at the pictures of um, Jessica in that it is not the same artwork as you see for Jessica and the rest of the cartoon. Those images from the patty cake scene were drawn up early in the production and not changed later on when they changed the look of the character. Oh. So you get a good look at what Jessica would have looked like in an initial concept. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. I'll look for that. Unless they George Lucas it and they change her in subsequent releases or something. I like doubt that. they would have bothered for just that. But. I should hope not. Yeah. Okay. But- I also thought it was kind of funny because he's got a bunch of pictures of them playing patty cake. And uh, this is what obviously really upsets um, Roger because his wife is playing patty cake with another guy. And as he's flipping through the pictures... It's like the cells of animation, and, and it looks like motion. It does. Yes. Actually, playing, you know, I, I, I remember King, that, the, the, which is an animation commentary. It it is an excellent, well made film. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know. I, I think I may bug Daniel about doing a rewatch on that. But if if you want to join us, let let me know. I would love to. Sure, sure. That might be an idea. 